Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to talk about Colombia, who is facing a very complicated situation. And uh, I'm with David Rora here on uh, on Face to Face, and we're going to talk about what's happening in Colombia, but also what the Colombians are doing in New York City. David, welcome back to Face to Face. You were already here like years and years ago. We're not going to say how long. <laughs> it's been it's been a while, and I'm very happy to be back. All right. Uh, I'm not happy to be back because of the situation right now. Uh, but thank you for having me today. So maybe you you want to explain it a bit overview of what's happening and why the the situation is so complicated. Yeah, of course uh, it isn't that complicated, but this is the result of years and decades of uh, negligence and uh, the result of a bad. Uh, we already had a bad omen uh, when we knew uh, the result of the plebiscite uh, for, for when Juan Manuel Santos um, decided to go through a plebiscite to uh, ask the Colombian people to uh, decide whether they wanted to support the peace agreement with, uh, with uh, the FARC uh, guerrillas. And we knew at the time that the the country was already already uh, pretty divided uh, ideologically, and that affected the result of it. Which, as we know, uh, the uh, uh, the answer uh, for not doing it, not moving forward with the agreement, uh, won roughly won uh, by fifty one percent, which is a reflection of uh what has been the the how polarized colombia has been in the last few years and then we saw that uh when duque became uh even duque became uh, the president i think uh we knew this could have happened and of course it happened so yeah he has he and his government uh which is highly um commanded by by big companies big banking uh, a few families that are very powerful in the country uh, have decided and also have power over uh, the most prominent media outlets um, can uh, you can we compare to to what the experience in the US with uh, with president Trump it it's yeah I think is it's a good parallel uh, although I mean there is this idea that Trump, uh, the one who was uh, behind Trump's power, uh, was maybe Putin, but he also represented um, big corporations and billionaires. Um, it's the same with Ivan Duque in many ways. Uh, he, as we know, is a representative of um, Alvaro Uribe Vélez, mm -hmm. uh, former president, and who has been uh he has been in power after being the president vicariously both by Juan Manuel Santos who uh at some point um uh, sort of broke ties with him and became they became um uh, probably you know sort of um opponents and Ivan Duque is basically uh this character which is um he seems to be, I mean, he, he has created this persona of someone who is uh, sort of an inept and uh, there is like a level of, of, of stupidity and it's even funny, but it's a dangerous kind of funny uh, because basically he uh, pretty much just follow the commands of uh, what the Uribismo um wants to do and even in his own party the um centro democratico uh, there is this sort of fracture that doesn't seem really uh real it seems like everything is very orchestrated uh that's a little bit of a speculation of course but it, it, everything has been so evident um to a very dangerous point that uh, has led us to where we are 
So right can you describe a little bit where what is the situation now uh, concerning the taxes, concerning the people who have been killed, concerning the protest? I know it's a lot of things happening in different yeah. cities, in Medellin, and so on and so forth. So um, the government has decided in a spearhead head, headed by uh, President Duque to introduce a tax reform. At first, we knew about the tax reform. But there is also, along with the tax reform, which is already pretty, uh, um, I mean, it keeps uh, deepening the country in this uh, environment of inequity. Uh, but it's not only we kept learning uh, through how the situation unfolded that it wasn't only a tax reform, it, only, it also came along with uh, health uh reform education and pay uh pension like uh, uh the money that retired retirees um get yeah, after retired people yeah so it's educated so education else and i'm sure the situation with uh, in colombia was very complicated with uh, the covid uh, pandemic and exactly then... so he decided you know, he and the government decide, decided to introduce these reforms that basically affect mostly uh, uh, middle and low income families. Uh, it doesn't affect at all high income uh, families or households or, or individuals. And of course, it doesn't affect at all corporations. So and they, just, they introduced this in the middle of a pandemic in uh, a month that has been very very hard in terms of the death toll and the uh, number of cases. Uh, so that created uh, just this, uh, the perfect storm pretty much uh, yeah. to, to basically end up in, in the uh, with the violence, violence with that we are experiencing. So, right so what's the situation now? So you have protest almost every day people and, and and i think last week or a few days ago uh, the government retreat yeah i uh, to be honest i as you know i was um i started being very active in terms of yeah activism uh, uh when uh, prior to the plebiscite and after the plebiscite result and I think over the years, um, I've been part of uh, a number of rallies, demonstrations, uh, protests. I haven't been in all of them, but I've, I, I also because I, as time went by, I also had like other, other things, other interests um, here in, in New York City, um, new family, etc. But. Uh, of course, my heart and my mind is always in Colombia. But I, and I was, um, so I sort of was a bit distant from the, I mean, over the years, uh, there have been, there, there's yeah. a big movement yeah. in New York and New Jersey. But what I experienced yesterday, uh, I think uh, prior protests and rallies and demonstrations always brought uh and gather sort of the same same group of people yeah including us <laughs> yeah, and yeah. many other activists uh, uh -huh. who are out there and yesterday was surprising to see a much larger uh group of people particip and participants it was hundreds of people that I, i've never seen before i have a few uh also sort of a speculation of who they were, uh, which I think is in a way some, um, it's a sign of hope in terms of who, um, as we, well, you and I know, but for um, people who are watching this show, uh, historically, Colombians in New York City and New Jersey and the three state area, and also in Florida, in Miami mostly, um, are there are like different uh, tiers of or waves of 
migration. So a number of Colombians in the US came during the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s as a result of uh, the violence, uh, uh, also because they were persecuted by either the guerrillas uh, or, or uh, the paramilitary. And a few were uh, um, asylees. So this is to say that that generation in general has been very conservative and has yeah they are almost they are like good republican i mean like yes exactly yeah, right wing yeah totally and there is a justification for that also they left colombia or they knew true news or through their families or right before they left colombia um that they believed or yeah, they, they, they had this belief in uh, Alvaro Rive as the uh, supposed leader or hero who uh, created um, Colombia from, from the guerrillas, which is by far not true. And um, it was a sale of what the Uribismo is in, 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 in New York. Um, and I want to say that yesterday I saw many families that have been traditionally Uribistas. I like to think that uh, because, as I mentioned before, there are so many. There were so many families, uh, people of all ages, uh, even children. I saw a lot of parents with their, their kids, um, sort of finally realizing and calling out Alvaro Uribe and Ivan Duque, Duque um, for what they have done, and which is very evident in the, in the last, um, during the last week. They are flatly attacking um, Colombian people. And when they are, um, they, when they are performing their right to protest, um, behind the excuse or the argument that there are some vandalic acts and there are some violent violent uh, situations outbreaking in the middle of the in the, in the midst of uh, the protest which happens but uh, they uh, they have gone through or they have allowed both uh, police officers and uh members of the army to perform illegal uh illegal actions like not uh operating without wearing uh, their uniform or uh having their um devices or equipment for uh identification there is there are uh reports of sexual violence which is uh, a war crime uh for i mean there is no reason why uh there is there's no justification or reason or i can fathom why there are people protesters who are reduced to sexual violence which is uh a human rights uh violation yeah and of course um Pretty much everything, but that is to demonstrate uh, the extent of how serious things are back in, in Colombia. So, how how do you see the next um, few few days? Because we're running out of time, and, and just wanted to to see how can we um, describe what's going to happen next in New York, or and then how do you see the situation in Colombia? Yeah, I think New York will be uh, and. Colombian communities around the world will stay uh, going through different rallies. There is one today in Jackson Heights, and I think there will be a few more over the week. I don't know. I like to think that probably over time, violence will uh, dissipate uh, based on the last uh, series of protests that happened in 2019, but those went through three months from uh, 
late November to late of, of February, and it was in many ways COVID, which COVID nineteen that actually stopped them at, at the time. Um, so we are in the middle of a crisis. It's hard to foresee what will happen, but what I I want to sort of foresee is what is the repercussion of this this week and this uh, uh, this recent history uh, in terms of uh, how Colombians will will respond in uh, our next elections, both for president and for members of the Congress and Senate. When so are I the think, elections? Sorry? When, when are the elections? Uh, they will be in roughly a year from now, yeah. next May, May next year. Uh, so I think it's important, uh, it's something that has been in my uh, head. Um, uh, I don't know what would, what it would be or, or yeah, what would be the mechanism, but I, I think it's important to sort of gather this information and sort of create mementos or devices for people to uh, keep in mind and be aware of what these four years have been. Uh, because it's very easy that during elections and uh, electoral campaigns, people easily forget uh, what has happened. And this is a very Colombian thing to do. And I think it's very, uh, I think it also happens here in America. Uh, but I think it's that relationship between protest and action in um, in polls, in election polls, seems to be disconnected. And for most people, it's very hard to uh, decide on what congressman or senator they should vote. They like. Voting as an exercise for democracy is already um, a very sort of mm, complex thing to do for most people. So when it happens, usually they have some idea of who they vote for the president or in some cases for their um, mayor. But it, when it comes to uh, electing other officials or uh, rep representatives, it's hard for them to know. And they are, I mean, we've many times focused on the role of a president, uh, but the Congress and the Senate, uh, have, they of course have um, a lot of powers, a lot of power and yeah. a lot of um, yeah. decision power. Yeah. So it's important to keep keep in mind who voted for who, for what and how that affected us, because that is not uh, that evident especially when we are in front of uh, the the ballot. So that is something to keep in mind. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, David, for being on the show. Um, and um, we will uh, keep in touch to see how the process go in Colombia and best wishes for, for you, your family, and for the country. Thank you. Me too. That, that was you. Face to Face. And keep with watching your news on Presenza.com and who up to hear from you very soon. And please subscribe in uh, YouTube, on Facebook, and uh, we now do podcasts. Thank you very much.